Hey what is going on everyone, this is Wicked and today you'll find out if I could convert a completely stock based custom ROM on Samsung Galaxy S8 or S8 Plus to a super customizable one having most of the features from a more advanced custom ROM like Renovate Tight for example. If you're coming out just to see if it's possible, the answer is pretty much yes. But I highly advise you to stay here and watch the entire video because it is going to be an epic one. The ROM I will flash today is Soldiers 1, which I find to be really stable and updated and I will show you how to completely change the boring white Samsung theme to a complete dark one using Substratum Team Engine, gain the ability to have most of the customization features you possibly need, fine-tune the performance and smoothness by replacing the stock kernel with Noxus NX kernel, and also tweak the audio sound with the infamous Viper for Android FX sound mode, which yeah, works perfectly fine on this audio based ROM. First of all, in order to customize a stock custom ROM, you'll need to be running a custom ROM. I assume you already know how to install a custom ROM on your Galaxy S8 or S8 Plus. I have tons of videos regarding this topic, but to eliminate any questions, I'll quickly get throughout all the steps. First of all, boot into recovery, then make a backup of your current configuration. You can restore it back later without any data loss. Then, wipe your device, this step is pretty much optional if you're already running a previous version of Soldier's ROM. Then, go to Install, select the ROM, and configure it as you want in a ROM installer, and then click Install. Reboot, and you're done. The first booting process may take some time, so be aware of that. Ok, done with the installation process, make sure you configure your device and then let's start the customization procedure by changing this Samsung launcher forever. Nova launcher is one to go from here in terms of customizing purposes, speed and smoothness. That's it for now. Get back into TWRP and you'll need to flash the latest Nox kernel, which also requires a new modified recovery due to the problems with not being able to mount the data partition. So we'll go to install, select image and flash the TWRP 3.2.2-0 modified .img onto the recovery partition, reboot into recovery again and then let's install Nox's kernel. Nox's kernel does not come with root included, so you'll have to flash Magisk or SuperSue immediately afterwards in order to gain root access. I'll go for SuperSue since I'm a huge fan of Chimefire's work, always been, always will be. Reboot. During this booting process you will encounter an abnormal reboot, just stay still and let the device boot up nicely. Let's clear something out. Most of Samsung's wallpapers are boring, so let's change that out. A lot of you guys ask me where do I get all the wallpapers from and the answer is Wallpaper Craft app. Remember I told you about the exposed? Well, it's time to install that one, so boot again into TWRP and install the right zip. Then, the final zip we're going to be installing today is um, Viper for Android FX specially made by Wicked Witch for Oreo. I heard a lot of you are having problems with getting Viper for Android FX to work, but this zip worked perfectly for me. Most of you are running Magis and maybe the Viper for Android FX module there is the problem. Everything should be working great now. Before we get into exposed modules, I want to get rid of all these white backgrounds. They really get on my nerves. In order to do that, download Substratum Team Engine along with Swift Black Team for an immersive look. And why not a custom icon pack to match with the wallpaper? I went for Pix UI. I changed the icon pack into Nova settings and now it's time to apply the Substratum theme over all the apps. Simply select the Android version which is Android 8 minus Samsung and select all the apps. Make sure you select the exact app version for some of them. Then click build and enable. It will take some time to install all the overlays so be patient. Then click on the three dot icon and activate all the overlays. For the theme to be applied successfully, you will have to reboot your device. Voila! Complete darkness. You can see how great it looks and take in mind how it looked like at the beginning. That's already a hell of a difference. Goodbye Samsung team, welcome see the black one. Hmm, well finally here. I was actually looking for an alternative of Rice app in order to customize the device. If you don't know what Rice app is and how it works, check the video in the card section. If you want to achieve that level of customization, it wouldn't be possible without Exposed. And more specifically, more specifically, it wouldn't be possible without the Gravity Box for Oreo. This module you'll have to download will lead you to some, not all, but some of the customization you used to have into Rice app. Download it, activate it and I guess it's the last time I'm saying this. Reboot. Open up Gravity Box and here you'll find many sections and lots of subsections of mods. For example, you can hide the clock, center it, show the seconds, 
show date, day of the week and so on and so forth regarding clock status. You can switch the battery icon style, a feature which is not present in the Rice app, so that's even a bonus. Did you miss the status bar icon color? You can also set your beloved one here as you can notice. Now, most of the settings here were designed for stock unmodified pure Android ROMs, so not every option here will work, and some of them may get you into boot loop. If that happens, all you have to do is to flash a zip into TWRP which will disable the exposed framework, and then you will be able to boot up and disable that feature, which messed up your phone. That's maybe the biggest downside here compared to Rice app. Apart from that, tons of customization options here. I promised you that I'll try out NX kernel today, and as you could see until now, everything was smooth and fast. The biggest challenge is gonna be the gaming test. As usual, the most unoptimized game on the planet will definitely have some lag spikes on a stock kernel. I already tried it. I'm talking about PBG, of course. As you can see here during my gameplay, I had absolutely no lag at all. Nothing. Everything was behaving normal. Not a single frame drops. So you can notice that some tweaking has been done to this kernel compared to the stock one. Also, if you're interested in modding it, you may want to download the M2X app and play with the frequencies as you want, perhaps you find yourself another great profile. It's not really fair to make a battery status on this video since I rebooted the phone a lot, but for comparison, I started this review at 82% and now, after more than 1 hour of reboots and heavy usage, I'm at 56%, which is kind of a big descent at almost 25% loss per hour. Of course, on day-to-day -day usage, you may be looking at less drainage depending on how you use your phone. Apart from that, now you know how you can achieve this level of customization. I promise I'll show you a full tutorial on how to team your device like mine, and I'll keep that as a promise. The video will eventually be posted. Anyways, I hope you enjoyed my review, don't forget to subscribe to my channel and activate that bell icon so that you'll be notified with all my uploads. I am Wicked and you can find me on Twitter and Instagram at Let's Get Wicked and on Google Plus at Wicked is here. If you like my video, don't forget to press that thumbs up button and why not support me on Patreon, links in the description. As always, until next time, take care. Wicked is out, bye bye.